Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us again on our Young Adults Online Devotions. Tonight, we're looking at racism, a topic which a lot of us have been expressing our own opinions on, listening to other people's opinions, trying to weed out helpful sources. Uh, tonight, we've asked Reverend Dr. Stephen Skiss to take to look at what Scripture has to say on racism. It's only a short devotion, but hopefully it will encourage you and help you in, our, in your thinking. Can I pray with you as we start uh, this topic tonight? Father, I thank you that you care about things more than what we will ever know or understand. So, Father, we thank you that you call us to be people who seek justice. And, Lord, won't you help us learn what that means? And won't you help us live that out in these days? Amen. This is my family story. You go back, it's two generations. We're now in the 1950s and the 1960s. My father grew up on a small farm in West Cork. And like many on very small farms in that era, uh, not much money, uh, fairly poor. And uh, the brothers and sisters that he, he grew up with, pretty much everyone went off to England for a, a few years. They didn't, well, one settled in England, most, most of them came back, but they needed to earn money. So they went off to England, they, they went to London, they went to the big cities, they worked in factories, they worked in offices, uh, they worked in construction, they worked on the railways and so on. Very standard story. That's my father's side of the family. My wife's side of the family, my wife's parents uh, from uh, from Tyrone, uh, they went to London in the early 1960s, late 50s, early 60s, and they were there for a few years. And indeed, my wife and her twin sister were born in London. They were actually born in Brixton on the Railton Road, which is quite a famous uh, part of, uh, of of London uh, through the ethnic diversity over the over the centuries. Both sides of my family had the same, let's call it welcome in England. It was no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Racism is a significant part of the world in which we live in and racism is part of, uh, of our ex experience. The gospel reminds us that we are all one in Christ. Galatians 3, uh, 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free. We are all one in Christ. There is no place for racism. There is not black as sin, white uh, as pure. We are all one in Christ. Racism, racism in any shape or form is sinful. And whether we have suffered from it, because in many cases, no, we haven't, uh, or to a very minor extent, we can be part of the problem, either with our attitudes and our words, or indeed, whenever we fail to challenge attitudes and words. Matthew 25 reminds us that it's uh, whatever we do, for the least, this is what we're doing as if it were for Christ. And when we don't do anything for the least, this is when we're ignoring Christ. So when we hear racist phrases, when we, racist stereotypes are being perpetuated, if we sit back and keep silent, we are ignoring Christ in need. So the gospel compels us to challenge racism. In our, in our attitudes, in our words, in everything that we do, but in the wider society. We cannot be passive. We cannot say it's not our problem. It's somebody else's problem. This is our problem, both in our attitudes, ourselves, but also in how we respond in wider community. The gospel compels us to be active in this. It's our Christian calling. We have no choice. Before the rush and roar, you've come my raging seas. Always go before in wondrous sovereignty. You bring me safe to shore where I am meant to be. And I am rest assured that you love me. I raise a mighty voice, I sing in victory. I celebrate, rejoice, your goodness I receive. Oh, I 
have is yours to make my life complete. For you have won my heart, made beauty out of me. My God fights my battles, keeps the rock under my feet. My Contending, defending, his love has got no ending. Oh, taking, reawakening, he's stirring my heart again. Unfailing, sustaining, his love has got no ending. Embracing, consuming, stirring my heart again, contending, defending, his love has got no ending, overtaking, reawakening, stirring my heart again, unfailing, sustaining, his love My God, He is able to fulfill my every need. And it's Christ that goes before me. Now death has been denied. My God is my defender. He will never leave my side.
Let's pray. Gracious God, forgive us when we are part of the problem, when our words, our attitudes, our actions are far less than what they should be. And forgive us when we are part of the problem, when we fail to challenge the words and the attitudes and actions of others. Give us your courage that in every situation we might live out the gospel imperatives that we might challenge where there is wrong and stand up for what is right. This day and every day we pray. Amen.